With today's video, we're going to slow it down and just, we're going to take a breather today. And that's primarily what this is about. And y you'll see what I mean when we get into the video. This is Kat the Crowing Doctor here at the Magic Library. And today we're going to be talking about self-care and how it will relate to your writing. Before we get into this video and everything, um, I want to just absolutely just like just ah, I, I, I am so excited about um, this weekend's video and everything because my mom and I are going to be taking a literal road trip down to um, all of these different bookstores, two of which I've actually worked at to see if they actually have a copy of my book and we're also going to ask permission to film in there and everything. So yeah. If you are interested in buying a copy of my book, Arborea Lux, the book uh, link for Amazon is down in the description below. And I hope you guys will uh, read it and I hope you guys will like it and also leave a review. Arborea Lux is a paranormal dark fantasy with a little bit of romance, a little bit of mystery, a uh, villain over trying to overthrow the ruling monarchy because of trauma. And there's a bit of drama between the main characters anyway. You know, just, you know, just the regular stuff, you know, like that usually grips readers or, or if you're in my case, just absolutely frustrates them. So, <laughs> so if you guys are interested in a story like that, that's filled with vampires, um, sort of pseudo demons and some magic, um, please go down to the Amazon link below in the description and check out my book. And if you are reading my book right now or you have finished it, please go to Goodreads um, if you have a Goodreads and leave a review on there because it'll help with the circulation. It will help me get my story out there. And with the revelation this week of my book being sold in stores everywhere, all across the world, even as far as places as New Zealand and Australia, I really need that circulation because I'm, I'm interested to see how well, how far this goes. But enough of the shameless plug out of the way. Let's get into the video. To really start off this video, I would like to say to all of my uh, LGBTQ friends, uh, family, and also loved ones, happy Pride Month. Um, today, uh, today at the recording of this video is the 1st of June, and it is the designated Pride Month. And even with all of the just absolute bigotry going on in the country right now, you guys deserve to be loved. and always know that I will be a supporter no matter what happens and just I, I will I will forever be an ally for the LGBTQ plus community. And with that sort of just leading our way into um, this video's topic and everything, um, it is important to note that um, expressing yourself no matter what is sort of affirming for your self-care. You're because you're being true to yourself. And I really hate that the world is in such a state where we are wanting everybody to conform to one specific ideology when it's the entire world that is absolutely diverse. And it's just, it's, 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 I'm trying not to go, go political here because I hate talking politics, but I, I, I feel like I have to. And to sort of sum it up, I will say this. I do not like where all of this is going right now. People should be free to choose who they, who they want to be. And it's whether you are a male identifying as female, a female identifying as male, or if you identify as both, if you're non-binary, just, just the thing about it is, is to all the religious bigots out there or to those like, like severe Bible thumbing Christians that absolutely scare the living crap out of me because of how just absolutely like devoted they like so blindly devoted they are. Let's just say that I will be praying for you. I will be praying for those Christians to not be so bigoted and to absolutely not be absolute hypocrites. And you guys know who you are, especially if you are the kind of Christian that's saying, that's not right, or saying to this, to this video right now, that's not right. And I am absolutely sure you're going to hell. So if you think I'm going to hell, you've already, and you're pointing your finger at me, you've got three fingers pointing right back at you, so. Food for thought. 
But enough with that, let's get into self-care and how it will relate to your writing. Self-care is really important whether you are a writer or a reader or if you're any sort of creative. And it is something that I didn't really realize until I was actually in college um, this past time, specifically because I was like dealing with some severe depression and I didn't have really any outlet for it. I was literally like either sleeping, eating, or going to work. I had absolutely cut classes out of my life because I couldn't find the will to go to work, the, the will to go to classes and to learn what I needed to in order to be an artist. That being said, I am sort of glad that I left that uh, life, that uh, short chapter of depression behind me, um, specifically because I was able to come home, I was able to find a good job, and I was actually able to write and finish my book and also publish it. So I think that sometimes drastic change is needed for self-care. There are many different kinds of self-care besides the obvious big life change bit um, that I just mentioned. Um, one such way is just take some time for yourself. Take a break. I actually have a video um, that I will probably link down in the description below that I talk about taking a break and everything. So, <laughs> and it's, and I, and, and I realized then when I was making, when I was editing it and everything, I didn't do this joke and I can't really say this joke now without sort of it being obsolete and also sort of forced. And that in itself is really sad because I think it's a really clever one. It's sort of cliche, but hey, we're, we're readers and we're writers. We read what we read and we write what we write because we love this because we love certain cliches and the fact that it's a cliche really shouldn't matter. But definitely take a Kit, take a Kit Kat and have a break. There, I said the joke. I cannot believe it. I'm I'm just gonna be waiting for all the people to be roasting me in the comments for how like how lame that joke was. <laughs> but I digress. Let's continue on with um, our chosen topic. <laughs> self care comes in a lot of forms. Um, for me, when it comes to self care, I will usually either listen to music. Um, sometimes I'll listen to ASMR. Um, I will read. I will definitely read because I love reading so much. I'll work like on a little one-shot project that's, you know, just like a little like short story project or something. Something that'll keep my mind focused and not completely shut down, but at the same time it'll give me time to, you know, relax and, you know, just, just like help me center myself. One such writing project that I do um, specifically for when I'm trying to relax and everything, oddly enough, is fan fiction because with fan fiction, you technically don't have to really do anything except just valid amounts of research about the fa about whatever fandom that you're doing. <laughs> um, the current project that I'm working on right now for uh, a fan fiction project, sort of just help me relax and everything, is the fan fiction for uh, Ellie Rain's uh, Necrosine Chronicle series. And it's just, I will say this, I, I love like uh, bouncing ideas off of her and everything. And it shows that she and I are really on the same page when it comes to uh, all the stuff that's ha all the stuff that happens in the books and all the stuff that's right now happening in the story. Like, how would these characters react if this thing changed or if this thing changed? It's just, it's very, very interesting, and it's just, it's it, it's it's a very fun little exercise to keep your brain motivated, but at the same time, just sort of relax you because it's like you have because there's no pressure to finish a fan fiction project in fact i actually have several fan fiction projects that if i looked at them right now most of them could be finished but with where they are in the storyline that i've chosen they it would like it would be it would be like absolutely drastic to just like absolutely just cut it off there so just just, just yeah there are some other hobbies that um, I particularly enjoy when it comes to um, some much needed self-care. Um, one of which is anime. I absolutely love anime. As you can see from my manga right here, I love anime a lot. I have an entire collection of anime that I watch whenever like I'm feeling down or I feel like they're, it's a guilty pleasure anime. For example, Diabolic Lovers is the perfect example. If, you, if you're if you an anime fan and you know what I'm talking about, definitely tell me down in the comments below. 
I have the Crunchyroll app, so I'll often go on there to just absolutely just find an anime that I've not watched in a while. Or find a new one that I will just absolutely binge through while putting my while putting my brain through the odd type of anxiety that puts my that just puts my entire body at ease. I don't know how that's self-care, but for me it particularly works. I'll give you a perfect example. I just got done. Uh, I just fin I just w started Gungrave um, like night before last, and I just finished it last night. Do you know how hard you have to do? Just to just to like absolutely binge 26 episodes, you have to skip the beginning credits and the end credits, which honestly I do with most anime anyway. But for Gungrave and specifically why I did it, the opening and ending just did not match. It was it was horrible, very horrible sound uh, song choices. Just yeah, just just no. Apart from that, it was very the story of Gungrave was actually very engaging and everything. Of course, I learned that it was based off of a manga that was based off of a video game. I'm not about to go and try to find the video games to play these. It's like I'm not that interested. That being said, I wouldn't mind watching some gameplay of the of the games and everything, but I'm not going to be so gung -ho, gun ho. <laughs> Gunho, um, that I would literally just go and just play the games. One, because I'm not that good at fighting games like this, and second, it's just, it's just, I, I would rather watch and rewatch the anime over and over again. Another kind of self care would be just like just to unplug, just unplug, take a take a let take a break from technology. Um, and do something else that you find to be fun. Um, I, I typically find that uh, baking helps me a lot. The only time I'll ever look at my phone is when I'm looking for a specific recipe. Um, but I specifically love baking and everything. I have this amazing homemade recipe for chocolate, for, uh, chocolate chip cookies that my dad absolutely loves. So I'll make those every once in a while. Um, I also know how to make a very, very, very delicious homemade honey bread, and I specifically make that for special occasions. But if I ever feel like I need a break from writing or reading and everything, I will typically actually watch a movie. Watching movies and everything also sort of helps towards research um, in that it, like, it keeps your brain occupied um, with certain story ideas but at the same time it relaxes you enough to where like you know where you're like you're just you're calm and you're grounded of course I say that in some of the movies that I like watching um like uh Crimson Peak are specifically horror movies so that's yeah that is a brilliant example for wanting to uh not cause stress and everything did you like the little head tick that I did there? If you guys have ever been, if you guys were in high school with me and you saw me uh, act out um, a little skit for uh, Jury of Her Peers and I was playing the uh, the uh, insanity plea, you, you know where that's from. <laughs> but enough about that, let's talk about more self-care. Go for a drive, go for a hike. I mean, like anything that'll just like, sort of gets you out of your element but something that you can easily go to that is considered to be self-care if you decide that to you want to go to your phone for self-care absolutely do not go to social media i know tiktok is big i'm on tiktok and i know it's big but at the same time there's just so much negativity on social media that i definitely do not recommend it for just for trying to get your brain in the right headspace for self-care so no social media find a quiet space somewhere and just have some time to yourself i have a specific spot outside that i will literally take a blanket and a pillow and i will just go out and i will lay underneath the sky and i'll either watch clouds or i'll watch the sun peek through like the pine needles and everything because there's a lot of pine trees in my backyard <laughs> But what's important for you and for your own self-care is that you know what you need for your own self-care and you find what routines that you need to do. So I've gone through several examples that have helped me specifically, 
Um, I don't know if they'll specifically help for anybody else, but uh, it's just, they're, they're, think of them as suggestions. You don't necessarily have to follow them. Take everything that, uh, okay, so complete disclaimer here. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. I am no expert when it comes to self-care, writing, or even reading. And I know I'm technic and I know I technically have a writing craft uh, playlist of all of my own advice and everything, but it's just it's just I am not an expert by any means. <laughs> What's important about this journey is that you discover yourself as long as well as me uh, discovering myself. I don't even think that was grammatically correct, but I'm not going to go back and re reshoot that video. Just absolutely not. <laughs> All in all, when it comes to self-care, you do you and everything, no matter what. Whatever makes you feel comfortable or helps you feel relaxed, that's technically self-care and trying to get your, and give yourself some little positive affirmations along the way. And I think that's technically it for this video and everything, um, but I do have one short message for everybody out there because it is the beginning of Pride Month, because it is the just the highlight of a time for not only people of the LGBTQ community to be able to express themselves freely and willingly, but also the discrimination and the bigotry that they're having to do, deal with and everything. I have this message and I hope that it is encouragement for everybody. If you are of a different spiritual belief, you deserve to be seen and respected. If you are part of the LGBTQ plus community, you deserve to be seen and respected. If you are a drag king or a drag queen, you deserve to be seen and respected. No matter your race, skin color, spiritual belief, religion, or philosophy, or just progressive beliefs, you deserve to be seen and respected no matter what. And no one should be able to take that away. Absolutely no one. No person or persons. No major religion. No political party. And certainly for the love of God or gods, no government. To all of you out there who have just found themselves or are and are trying to express themselves or if you're just starting that journey, Know that you are seen, you are loved, and you are respected, especially by me. Even if you believe that you're invisible, you are seen, and I will never not see you. To everyone out there who has a hard time just finding themselves, having trouble expressing themselves because of whatever reason, I hope you know that you are you, and you are seen, and never forget yourself. Never try to conform to anything. Be yourself and just be proud of who you are. And I hope that everyone who has stuck around to the end of this message absolutely side decides to share it because if, if this is the one video that you share to anybody who needs it and everything know that you have absolutely made my day but you'll also make somebody else's because I know that encouragement is in such short supply and if you liked this video and you want to see more like it please subscribe and ring that bell for more notifications and help me reach my goal to over a hundred subscribers because uh, even if it is a goal that I cannot meet, even by the end of the year, I want this channel to be able to expand so that people are able to get the encouragement that they need for whatever that they want to do. Whether it be being becoming a writer or just reading through that last book or doing something absolutely bad, like bat crap insane. Just you deserve the encouragement to be able to follow your dreams. And I think that that is the encouragement that everybody needs right now. If you guys are interested in following me for more just absolutely just insane stuff, whether it be a uh, little bits of encouragement like this, whether it's updates on my writing projects or my life in general, please go down to the description below and follow on all my links on my author page on Facebook, on my Twitter, on my Instagram, and also on TikTok. I do have a TikTok and I actually have a uh, version of this video 
um, of the message in this video up there on TikTok. So please just go out there and share it. Also, if you like my content and you also like my book and you want to help me continue that and everything, please um, buy me a coffee. Um, I have a Ko-Fi link down in the description below and I hope that you guys will support me so that I can help support others as well. When I first started this channel, I wanted there this to be a place for people to escape to because it is increasingly difficult to be able to find encouragement where we need it. And I think it's important for everyone to have that encouragement and to have that place to just escape to, whether it be a YouTube channel, a TV show or an anime, or even a book. A world lies beyond the cover of a book and it is important that we give those stories at least a little bit of our time because they're just waiting for us to immerse ourselves into that story to fall alongside the main characters to fall in love with the main characters or the villains to fight the bad gun to fight bad guys or fight good guys to battle or befriend beasts it's just it's a way of escapism that everybody needs, whether it be the art of storytelling or just finding a sense of community. And I hope that at the beginning of this Pride Month and everything, and even beyond it, I hope that any of my followers who are part of the LGBTQ community just absolutely are seen, are loved, and I hope you guys have courage to keep striving forward because you guys are incredible. I have so many friends in the LGBTQ community and I don't think they ever get enough love for the absolute courage that they have that they go through and everything. So, and I and I'm sort of envious of of that courage and everything cuz I really wish I could be that sort of courageous. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys have a very wonderful day. This has been Kat the Crowing Dother here at the Magic Library and just be yourself and be proud of who you are. Bye guys.